With the passing of the Second Elizabethan Age, the crown fell on Charles Philip Arthur George, a man who has courted controversy all his life. His health challenges aside, we weigh in on his one and a half year of reign. Find out how King Charles III's short reign has destroyed Queen Elizabeth's 70-year legacy. Before her passing, Queen Elizabeth took decisive action regarding her second son, Prince Andrew, who faced sexual assault allegations. On January 13, 2022, she stripped him of his Royal Highness titles, prompting him to step back from royal duties, a significant stand for the monarchy. However, recent events have stirred controversy. Despite his diminished royal status, Andrew, along with his estranged wife Sarah Ferguson, led the procession at the Thanksgiving service for King Constantine of Greece at St. George's Chapel, Windsor Castle, on February 27th. This move sparked public backlash, raising questions about Andrew's role and capacity. As a private citizen without royal duties, or the position of counselor of state, his presence overshadowed efforts to distance the monarchy from serious accusations, like sexual assault. His Majesty's association with such events appears incongruent with the steps taken by Queen Elizabeth to uphold the monarchy's reputation. Queen Elizabeth epitomized unwavering commitment to duty, prioritizing it above personal matters because she believed in being seen to be believed. She deliberately wore vibrant colors to stand out in crowds and be visible to well-wishers, even ensuring her collection of clear umbrellas matched her outfits for rainy England. She never missed an opportunity to be present for her people. A recent book revealed her battle with a severe form of cancer in her final years. Authored by a close friend of Prince Philip, the biography disclosed her struggle with bone marrow cancer, characterized by intense bone pain. Despite the agony and challenges in her last days, Her Majesty remained faithful to duty, even appointing her final Prime Minister just two days before her passing. Acknowledging Queen Elizabeth's lifelong dedication to duty, coupled with the knowledge of the potential pain she endured, deepens our appreciation for her selflessness. Despite battling a painful illness that would have justified her absence from the public eye, she continued to make her presence felt, notably during her last appearance on the balcony for her Platinum Jubilee. Even though she looked frail, she symbolically stood alongside the two future monarchs, Prince Charles with his wife Camilla and Prince William with his wife and children perhaps bidding farewell and presenting the future of the monarchy. It's like Her Majesty knew she wouldn't return. While acknowledging King Charles' serious diagnosis and treatment, there appears to be a gap in commitment to duty compared to Queen Elizabeth's exemplary approach. As the monarch of the United Kingdom and head of state to 14 other Commonwealth realms, this absence is conspicuous. Queen Elizabeth is remembered for her governance style, characterized by a reluctance to voice personal opinions to avoid influencing public debates, in line with the constitutional monarchy's ceremonial role, devoid of political influence. However, her son and heir, Prince Charles, now King Charles, diverged from this tradition by expressing his views on political matters notably through the controversial Black Spider memos to British government officials. This departure from royal protocol continued when Prince William, the next in line to the throne, recently voiced his opinions on political issues, drawing criticism for perceived interference in politics, despite his humanitarian intentions, such as his call for peace in the Middle East. As Prince George, who is destined to be the heir of Prince William observes his predecessor's outspokenness within a constitutional monarchy, it raises concerns about potential conflicts between the government and the monarchy over jurisdiction in the future. The guidance provided by King Charles III's approach to governance 
may foreshadow challenges ahead, suggesting a potentially uncertain future for the monarchy. All through her long reign, Queen Elizabeth II exemplified continuity and stability, embodying the motto, keep calm and carry on. She navigated personal and public challenges with grace and dignity. When facing criticism over her handling of Princess Diana's death, she spoke to her people as both a monarch and a grandmother, humanizing the monarchy and soothing the anger directed towards her. An overwhelming expression of sadness at Diana's death. We have all been trying in our different ways to cope. It is not easy to express a sense of loss. So what I say to you now, as your queen and as a grandmother, I say from my heart. And when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, she reassured her people in a live broadcast that they would reunite and life would regain its normalcy. I'm speaking to you at what I know is an increasingly challenging time. A time of disruption in the life of our country. We should take comfort that while we may have more still to endure, better days will return. We will be with our friends again. We will be with our families again. We will meet again. From 1952 to 2022, Amidst numerous challenges, she stood as a steadfast figure for her people, serving as their enduring motivation to persevere, their constant and reason to carry on. The royal family has had a rough start to the year, beginning with the Princess of Wales surgery and subsequent recovery, followed by the King's cancer diagnosis, and now the passing of Mr. Thomas Kingston. These difficult circumstances have seemingly halted the monarchy, leading to speculation about Queen Elizabeth's potential actions in these circumstances. While the situations are serious and require privacy for those involved, there has been a notable lack of clear communication and direction from the royal family. Despite King Charles naming his counselors of state, who would temporarily assume monarch duties during his incapacity, there has been no official announcement. The firm appears to be in a state of uncertainty, lacking a clear sense of direction and operating more in a limo state. As a result, a lot of speculation and theories concerning the whereabouts of senior members of the royal family have been brewing. Where is the stability? Where is the continuity? Queen Elizabeth demonstrated a commitment to adapt the monarchy to contemporary times. As Britain's longest reigning monarch, she navigated significant shifts, not only in technology, but also in values. On July 17, 2013, royal assent was granted to the Marriage Act, and on December 2013, Her Majesty's government announced the legalization of same-sex marriages that were set to commence from March of 2014. Despite her traditional upbringing, the Queen embraced change consistently rising to the occasion and taking necessary actions. During the COVID-19 pandemic, despite its unprecedented nature, she reassured her people of their ability to overcome, providing clarity and preventing speculation by addressing information gaps directly. In the face of sexual assault allegations against Prince Andrew, she swiftly revoked his Royal Highness title and relieved him of royal duties effectively averting a crisis and reaffirming the monarchy's stance. The situation of two senior members of the royal family being incapacitated by health reasons is quite unusual for the monarchy, and we believe it could have been managed more effectively. Clear communication could have helped to bridge information gaps and prevent speculation. Recently, there was widespread speculation and theories surrounding the Princess of Wales' whereabouts. Only after Kensington Palace responded did curiosity diminish. There have been numerous information gaps during King Charles's reign, leading to confusion and a lack of direction. We feel that His Majesty's office could have handled this situation better, especially considering its novelty to the people. Keeping the public informed would have alleviated the intensity of the situation.
While we understand His Majesty's physical unavailability, occasional broadcasts from him could have inspired hope and reassured his subjects. However, adapting to these changing times has been challenging for the public due to the prevalence of information gaps.